Hi everyone, uh, my name is Engin Rassan. I am at University of Nevada, Reno. I'll be presenting streaming file transfer optimization for distributed science workflows. As you are all familiar that many science projects generate large volumes of data. For example, event horizon telescopes generate 350 terabytes of data per day. Cosmology project Dark Energy Survey captured the pictures of the southern sky and collected around 500 gigabytes of data every night. A successor of that project, Vera Rubin Observatory, is expected to start operation in 2021 and will take high definition images of the sky, producing 50 terabytes of data every night. And this large volume of data often needs to be transferred across different locations on, the, on there because uh, data is not always processed where it is gathered. Um, in, in the example, Vera Rubin Observatory is located in Chile, and but its data will be streamed to National, Science, National Center for Supercomputing Applications at Illinois, United States. Another reason that large volumes of data is being transferred by science project is collaboration between scientists and which requires data to be moved from one center to another center to let the scientists on different locations to share data and to work on the same project. Another motivation is reproducible research initiative in which researchers are expected to upload their research outcome to central repositories. And when they wanna reproduce their research, they can access, the, they can download the large volume of data from these repositories to reproduce the research um, findings. As a result, data is collected on different locations than where it is processed, which requires large volumes of data to be streamed from where it is collected to where it will be processed or, or stored. This requires a reliable network performance because we don't want to wait for all data to be available before we start processing. That's because that's gonna cause uh, this can consume a lot of time plus we may not have enough storage to keep everything in memory and everything in, in to download everything at once before we start the processing that's why we can get the, the certain portion of the portion of the data process it and get another portion of the data and the process in another cases in streaming workflows data may not be available all at once right for for observatories data will be processed or produced over time so we have to get the data and process in the real time so there are several challenges associated with streaming transfers is in the distributed science which are the data size the science projects are generating huge volume of data another challenge is changing data set characteristics so when we are uh, when we have an observatory or when we have simulator that generates files over time, it is possible that it may, it can create different files over different times, right? As the time, as the time goes on, it may initially uh, start with small files then create large files. And these are important factors in terms of the performance of the network transfers. Another important factor because streaming work workflows are long running is background traffic. Unless the, we have dedicated network infrastructure, uh, these flows are gonna use shared environments in which the background traffic may vary significantly over time. So to offer reliable performance, reliable network performance. So let's look at the available solutions. So there are stream processing frameworks, such as Spark Streaming, Apache Kafka, Amazon Kinesis and others that offers data collection, buffering and processing in the real time. However, these, are, these systems are designed for internet kind of traffic, like video, audio, logs and websites and IoT data. These are all very small data compared to the size of the scientific workforce because in the scientific, in scientific projects, 
data sizes are very, very large compared to the message sizes in that are consumed by these stream processing frameworks. And this, if you want to compare the scale, the, the stream processing frameworks are designed to handle kilobytes to megabytes per second data rates, whereas the scientific applications can generate gigabytes of data uh, in every second. So there are files, there are transfer applications that we can use to copy the data from source to the destination, such as SSH-based ones, such as SCP, SFTP, RSync. However, these are not ideal for large scale transfers because they are unable to um, attain good performance in uh, high speed networks. There are FTP-based solutions, such as Globus, WinSCP, or FileZilla. So these are, um, relatively better performing compared to SSH-based solutions. However, they don't support streaming transfer. So what it means is that if your data is becoming available over time, then you have to schedule a new transfer for every new file or every batch of files. This has some over overhead because we need to establish a new connection for every file or every uh, file batches. Another issue is, is probably more important issue uh, compared to the first problem is the reliable performance. So these systems do not offer any performance guarantee. So they do not react to the changing conditions. For example, Globus does some optimization to uh, provide a good network performance. However, if the conditions change, your, your data set goes from small files to the large files, it doesn't update the transfer settings to um, sustain high performance. So in this work, we are proposing FCTREAM to offer robust transfer performance for distributed science workflows. And FCTREAM relies on application layer transfer parameters to address common network problems, common transfer problems, uh, in high speed networks those include those problems include discovery limitations or tcp buffer size limitations and i'm not going to go into detail of these parameters but if you look at this figure you're going to see that um, these parameters name specifically their names are pipelining parallelism and concurrency can increase the throughput from 600 megabit per second to 6 gigabit per second if you uh, tune them properly for your for your transfer. However, it is challenging to know exactly what values to use these, these, trans, these parameters. For example, in the case of parallelism, if you, uh, it, it helps initially, but after level eight, its uh, impacts start decreasing. So it, it basically has negative impact to increase. So knowing the exact value to set these par parameters is, is a challenging problem mainly because it, they depend on many factors. So if, it, if you're running a WAN transfer, wide array transfer versus local array transfer, or your storage type, or your data set type, is it small file dominated or large file dominated, or even like background traffic. And because of those um, factors, some of these, although some of these factors are quite stable over time, others may change for distributed workflows, right? For example, data set, characteristics may change over time. Your, your um, telescope may start like taking high resolution images and that will create larger fires as opposed to low resolution images at, at certain times if there is no interesting event, for example. Similarly, if you're running your telescope for a very long time and you're using, you don't have dedicated network, then the background traffic uh, is gonna intervene and it is gonna um, affect your transfer performance. So because optimal values of these parameters depend on these factors, and some of these factors are dynamic for streaming workflows. So we need to have a solution that can adapt these, the values of these parameters, transfer parameters in real time in order to uh, offer reliable performance um, over the entire execution time of your workflow. So here is the architecture of the FCT. So it has two components, data explorer and transfer controller. Data explorer 
periodically checks the source to find new files and it passes them to the transfer controller. And the transfer controller uses a couple of comp comp components uh, to predict the optimal values of transfer parameters and apply that to, to the transfer to keep the transfer throughput at high at all, all times. And it will do this in periodically in order to make sure that when the new files come, it will make adjustments or the, when the background traffic changes, it will again make adjustments of these transfer settings to ensure that your throughput is always as, as at the expected level. It uses uh, three components, uh, online profiling, dynamic tuning, and historical analysis to predict these parameters. If you uh, look at closely, then you'll notice that uh, dynamic tuning predicts all three parameters, but the other, online, other two components, online profiling and historical analysis, uh, predicts only concurrence. So dynamic tuning uh, simply relies on heuristics algorithm, which is using some uh, characteristics of data as well as the network to predict the values for these parameters. And when it is, when the new files are added, average file size is for example, one metric that will change over time and it will adapt that to, it will take that and we'll find new, parameter, new uh, values for the transfer settings. However, its performance is, gain is limited because it uh, is unable to incorporate uh, many factors that are that play a significant role in the uh, achieved performance, such as storage system settings or background traffic. So to address the limitations of the um, dynamic tuning, which relies on heuristic, sorry, heuristic algorithm, we use online profiling. What it does is basically uh, tries to find the optimal concurrency level in the real time by checking the current throughput and uh, comparing it, it against the desired throughput. And if it is current throughput is smaller than the desired value, then it calculates new concurrency value and will, will apply that to uh, see if the new changes uh, made any uh, improvement or not. And it will continue doing that until the performance is at the desired level or it notice it realizes that there is no there is no improvement at all and it only does it for concurrency because concurrency is the kind of a metric that has the most impact and because and, and searching all three algorithms in the real time is going to be really really costly so we limited that only to, to, the, to this parameter which um, improves not only io performance but also network performance and it will we will rig, like periodically run this online profiler to make sure that we are always um, our throughput is always within the range of desired value. And the third component is historical analysis, in which um, is aimed to uh, keep track of the outcomes that we find through online profiling. So all, the online profiling is good to find optimal transfer settings, but it's kind of expensive. So we need to, uh, like we start with certain value, we increment it and until we find the optimal one. So we don't wanna do this process every time the data set characteristics change or throughput declines or, 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 or increases. Um, to minimize the number of times that we run online profiling, we keep the online profiling results in the profiling history and so that we can, when something's change in the system, we can look at this profiling history first to see if we have any similar condition in the profiling history and if we found optimal settings for that condition so that we don't have to research, run the search process again. We can just use uh, whatever we found in the previous search uh, phase. And if we are able to find it, we will just apply it instead of like going through the search operation. If not, we have to go through the online profiling one more time. So let's compare, let's look at the evaluations. So we did experiments using four exit sites, um, namely Texas, uh, Stampede 2 in Texas, Comet in California, 
OSG in Wisconsin and the bridge in Ohio. And the round trip time between these servers are 30 to 60 milliseconds and network bandwidth is between 10 to 40 gigabit per second. Although we couldn't achieve 40 gigabit per second because of the network and, and IO limitations. And we compared the F-Stream against uh, Globus, which is one of the mainly used uh, transfer service, and as well as the static solutions and the adaptive CC approaches. Static and the Globus uses fixed transfer settings for entire transfer, and but adaptive CC is an, a modified version of the heuristic algorithm, static algorithm, uh, which runs the online profiling to find optimal concurrency only once at the beginning of the transfer. So it, it will still rise on heuristic, but runs the online profiling only once. So we evaluated the performance under for different um, on the different settings, one of them is changing its set characteristics. So we use synthetic data to test extreme conditions in the, what happens if the data set is dominated by small files in the first interval and the large files in the second interval kind of uh, conditions. And we also use real world data sets. We uh, got some data from sequence SRA, data, SRA database. And we also uh, created data that represents the the data work workload characteristics of the uh, uh, Linux coherent light source project. And we uh, created data sets that represents these conditions and we divided this data, large data set into clusters, into uh, small clusters and feed the, these clusters to the uh, transfer algorithm uh, over 30 seconds intervals to uh, emulate the streaming transfer behavior because streaming in the streaming workflows where data may not be available all at, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the transfer <clears throat> so we compared the performance and in and this shows the performance comparison in bridges and comet network and global and static solutions perform quite uh, low because they use static settings Adaptive CC performs better, but it is still lower in most cases compared to the F stream because it runs optimization once and, and when the system conditions change, it, it fails to adapt these changes. On the other hand, F stream outperforms the static approaches by up to nine times and adaptive CC by up to 3.6 times. Only in one condition where uh, data set starts with extra small files then switches to extra large files in which case f stream backs off instead of using high very large concurrency values it uses smaller values because the the, the, the benefit of that is to reduce overhead to the network as well as to the to the host servers and in exchange of slight decrease in the per, in, in the in the throughput so we evaluated the the performance of the FC stream uh, when the network congestion changes over time. For example, in this case, network congestion is introduced at a time around 160 seconds until around 309 seconds. And on the right, on the left figure, we can see that the FC stream increases the concurrency level when the congestion is introduced in order to maintain the transfer throughput at the desired desired level. And when the congestion is over, when the basic the background traffic is, is, is back to normal, then it reduces the con concurrency to where it was before the congestion to make sure that the overhead on the network and the system is at minimal level. So we also looked into um, the performance of the uh, FC team to in terms of how much each of these uh, the components, transfer optimization components contribute. In the first experiments, we compared the static versus dynamic, which is both of them are using heuristic, but one of them is just uh, uh, executing the heuristic multiple times and to adapt to changing conditions. And we have observed 13% improvement. Then we compared dynamic tuning with dynamic tuning plus online profiling and observed 55% improvement. 
and we then compile the compared online profiling with his, historical analysis, which, com, which is basically the complete package of the FC3, and we all have observed 25%. So basically, each of these components are contributing to the overall performance of the FC3. So as a conclusion, we can say we can uh, say that based data transfer applications fail to sustain high performance for streaming workflows due to changing its set and network conditions. They are good when the, everything is as uh, initial conditions, but they fail when the th things change because they fail to adapt um, the, to changing uh, environmental conditions. <coughs> F-System offers reliable and robust performance for streaming workflows using dynamic tuning, online profiling, and historical analysis. And it, as a result of this, it yields up to nine times higher throughput over static solutions and 3.6 times uh, over one-time real-time one-time optimization approaches. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at uh, this email address. And thank you.